Hi. I have a very light sketch here of, um, of a face. And um, I want to just demonstrate very loosely um, a fairly traditional way of approaching painting the face. I'm going to try to make that so you can see it more centrally and um, <clears throat> I've got my walls, overalls on. <clears throat> I went out and fed the horses, and by the time I'm finishing up with this, I'll be having to go out again. So <clears throat> I think I'm going to assume that the light is coming from the left side, slightly from above. You can choose whatever you're going to, to do. And my first step in this process is to take and this is a fairly common technique described by <clears throat> various artists in their books. So I'm going to take the Aurelian yellow, which is a very transparent yellow, so it's a good, a good color for doing this. <clears throat> and this same te technique also is very helpful for doing animals. And I'm basically going to start with putting a transparent layer of color, very watery, in the areas where I would expect to have the most light on the face. And that's just using the Aurelian yellow, very watery. And that one was a little too thick, a little bit on the ear. Um, there'll be a little bit on this cheekbone here where the light is coming, and um, there'll be some on the cheekbone and on the face where it curves around towards the light right there. There'll be some on the eyelid here. <coughs> And um, it would be the main ones. There'll be some on the chin, on this side, with the rest of the chin on the shadow. And I'm using <coughs> more or less a <coughs> I'm using a, a number six <coughs> synthetic round by um, by a Skoda because it has a good bounce and um, I don't need to hold a lot of water. When I want to hold a lot of water on my brush and, and do very wet on wet, I might be more inclined to use the um, the Kalinsky Sables. <clears throat> so I haven't decided yet what color the hair will be, but I'm going to assume that some of the hair color, whether it's brown or red or whatever, there'll be some light on the top there. So this is the beginning. Very straightforward. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry if I got a little bit of a tickle in my throat. Okay, so the next thing I do is I take some um, rose matter. That also is a very, it's a good rose. It's not too bright like opera. It's, so it's a kind of a toned down rose. But again, it's a nice transparent color. And I'm going to put that into the areas that are transitioning into shadow. And I'm working pretty fast because I want the colors to be able to blend together softly on the edges where they meet. <coughs> so there'll be some of this rose matter down here. 
in the shadow. And if ever I've gotten the color is too dark, um, I can always lift it with a little bit of water on the tip of my brush. And I want to blend that again here. Now, in some cases, I'm going to put layer <coughs> transparent colors one over the other. But to begin, I just want to more or less define the key areas of transition from the light to the shadow. And that rose matter I'm going to carry down into the shadow and that will be in the darkest part of the shadow be glazed over by perhaps some darker some darker rose matter <clears throat> but also some blues. So here in this area there'll be shadow because it's away from the light and under the lip here there'll be shadow. I know you can't see the drawing very well but as <clears throat> it's very lightly done on my portraits I don't like to see a lot of pencil marks underneath my portraits. I like to just have a small amount of, of um, outline for the key features to make sure that I get the proportions correct. And the lip, as the light comes down from the side here, is a little higher than the, a little coming down like this, the lip will be, the, the top lip will be in shadow because it's facing inward and um, so there'll be shadow there. But on this edge over here, there'll be a little bit of edge that's not <clears throat> very much in shadow. So what this is, is a, it's more or less like a, um, a th colored um, value drawing, but showing the transition in the face from light to shadow. And already you can begin to see <clears throat> that transition. Now you, I'm, I don't have anything that I'm, um, I don't have a photograph that I'm looking at, um, but, but I've done a fair amount of drawing of faces. So once I did the outline of the face and the proportions, and over here the hair will be Shadow there. <clears throat> there will be areas of shadow also here on the hair where the top hair is putting this back hair in shadow. <clears throat> okay, so that's the beginning. And this is basically <clears throat> not necessarily to do a, a great painting, um, but just to illustrate this technique, um, which has, is, is in a number of books and um, is very, very good. It's also the same technique that is in the wonderful wildlife um, book done by the um, McCarthy. Um, who's a resident artist. I have to think of your first name. I'm not thinking of it right now. But there's a, a wonderful wildlife book that I love that also does the same thing. No matter whether you're painting a bear or a horse or... Um, <clears throat> if it's a white horse, you might not put the yellow. You might just leave those areas white and just work with the other colors. Now... Um, 
One of the things I'm going to do then, the next thing is to take some blue. Usually we take um, cobalt blue because it's, it's uh, fairly transparent and it doesn't granulate like some of the other blues. Manganese blue and ultramarine blue granulate, which is really fabulous for maybe furry animals and fabulous for landscapes. But um, for a face, you don't necessarily want that. So I'm just going to put some of that blue over the darkest shadow areas. Um, and because it's a transparent blue, the um, rose below will show through. And there will be some... You just have to be careful not to put it very much in areas of any yellow because we don't really want green, it, it, for the most part, we don't want much in the way of green in our portraits. So there's the beginning of that. And over here, it's a wonderful shadow coming in here on the side of the nose. I did do a value uh, sketch of this face ahead of time, so I'm just looking at my value sketch, paying attention to my value sketch, and putting the shadows where I had indicated um, there would be light and dark. So over here, again, when we put that blue over the Over the pink, you create some violets, and um, and it's okay to leave a transition area where you have the red transitioning to the blue. And I'll just um, soften the edge so that there's some transition space there. And uh, you can see. And just have the slightest watery um, connection there, covering. And then uh, where I didn't put any red in here, I'm just going to put some blue. This is again cobalt blue. And a little darker. Cobalt blue on this edge. And, blending. and I'm wetting, cleaning my brush, drying it so it's just damp and letting it blend in some of this color so that it's got a nice transition. And here, I'm having this shadow be fairly intense over here. Mostly blue. And You say, well, that, that look, that's looking very much like a colorful face, but it's okay because we can go over it later with um, more of a skin tone wash for the kind of skin that it is, whether it's white skin, Native American skin, black skin, Asian skin. We can go over it and, and create the tone of skin that we want. But you can get the nice transition of gla by glazing in this way. And this wonderful little crevice down here. 
<clears throat> and again, I have to clean my brush, wipe it, wipe the tip, and transition the color, blending it. So I have soft transitions. And I'm using Canson, Canson paper, 140. Um, it's very reasonably priced, and it does let you lift any mistakes you make out. This is 140 pound, and um, it's especially good for practicing. Um, but you can, you know, some. You can also just have this be very good for your final paintings. Um, And the artists use it regularly for their final paintings. But oftentimes they tend to go up a grade um, to the arches or the Fabiano or the Saunders. is my puppies and deciding to uh, dig for a toy or something in their pen. <clears throat> okay. A little bit of um, shadow here in the ear. And uh, the base of the ear, here and the hair. This is where I'm um, doing um, life drawing classes, and not classes, but joining a group that does some life, life drawing allows you to work pretty quickly because you, you've been doing a lot of drawing of faces. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about it. It's also a good idea to um, use some of the books that really go through the anatomy and practice doing noses, ears, mouths, um, and uh, the, um, there are a lot of busts from Greek and Roman times that have beautiful sculptures of faces, and uh, sometimes you can just draw and draw from the bus and get a see. Oh dear. Dogs, just a minute, I have to go. Okay, back again. You know, I have a house full of dogs since I breed standard poodles, so once in a while they sound the alarm that they see a bird or something that they want me to know there's something outside. <laughs> They're very funny. But then they settle right down again. So I'm putting a little bit um, <clears throat> of this uh, rose matter. Again, um, going into a little bit more shadow there uh, on the side of the face that's under the hair. So I'm just working with three colors. And really, you can paint almost everything with just three colors. Um, when I was younger, the, doing oil painting, we, um, our approach to painting was always to just use the um, colors and learn how to mix them. And 
and you can learn to make brown and green and orange and really just about everything. Um, but I have such a fondness for color that I have an enormously large collection of colors. Um, the nice thing about watercolor is that they really never go bad. Um, once, as long as they don't get moldy for some reason on your palette. Um, in the tube they never go bad and you can always open up the tube and cut it open and scrape out the color and still use it ten years later or more. It really is always I'll just put a little more rose matter over that blue there, make it more violet. A little more here, a little more here. So I'm just intensifying a few shadows with the blue and the red but not adding any different colors. It's just still the same, the same rose matter, which is a, like a dark pink, and the same cobalt blue. And both of these colors are transparent, so they can allow washes one over the other to be able to allow you to see the color below. So all I'm doing is putting a little darker blue in a few places, letting that some of those shadows deepen where I know they're they are a little deeper under the like under the hair here, this shadow here of the hair is darker there. <coughs> and then it transitions out. intensity of shadow in here and a little bit of intensity of shadow in here. <coughs> Again, I'll do I'll let my colors mix on the paper. I could have mixed them together on my palette, but I like the idea of letting them mix on the paper and then they both show through. They aren't fully mixed. You have this kind of bouncing back and forth of the colors, vibrancy. <clears throat> and there's a little bit of shadow here. softening some edges. Um, one could avoid softening the edges and just have it be more modeled. Um, that would give a more kind of abstract and um, maybe modern quality to it, rough quality. But I like to soften my transitions. Um, I can always go back later <coughs> and make them a little stronger. So <coughs> I'm going to take a little blue and, um, and put that over here on the side of the nostril and bring in a little bit of the rose matter. Let them blend together. So I think you can get an idea of how this is <coughs> how this is working. So I started with light wash 
and um, and just deepening the colors with um, by using the same colors but with um, less water so they're a little more intense and a little bit of a shadow here under the lip because <clears throat> again the light is coming this way so the shadow is under the lip where the lip is sticking out a little bit. And um, the chin. And I'll just intensify it a little bit close to the lip. Doing a little bit of blending here. <coughs> And again, I'm leaving some blue and some rose, almost pure color in some places. And in other places, I'm layering them and mixing them. Okay, so you can begin to see the transition. <clears throat> I'm going to take a, um, a small Small um, number two synthetic brush and just put a slight amount of blue in the iris. I'm not sure yet what color I'll make the eyes, so I'm leaving my options open. And so I'm not making them automatically dark as if they were a dark brown. I'm just and um, the eyeball is uh, like a small ball. It really is a ball. And so it makes uh, above the eyeball it makes the skin a little lighter. I made this too uh, dark somehow. So what I can do is put some water on my brush, see that, and lift that out. I want to have that be light um, on the eyelid. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now since the, she is looking forward, um, I, and for this one thing, I'm going to take some Payne's Gray, which is almost black, and I'm going to put some of that in there. I could just mix my blue and rose matter together, but I'm going to just do this with the Payne's Gray and lightly make the pupil of the eye dark. And I'm going to also do the same with my nostril. Um, I'm going to leave a transition of that rose matter there, but I'm going to, underneath the deepest part of the crevice of the nostril, put the paint's gray. In the same way, I'm going to take the paint's gray and put it in a few places where I really want to emphasize the shadow, where it's very dark. And the paint's gray is fairly transparent, semi-transparent. 
And so uh, it has a blue cast to it, but it's a mixture of black and blue. So I'm just putting that in there. And I'm going to take that Payne's Gray and now put it also in some other places that are very, very dark. This eyelid here. And I still haven't decided what color hair she's going to have. Um, but I just want to show you the process of building up the shape of the face with these colors. And over here, there's a little place where the ear has got some very dark area. That's pretty normal. In the crevice of the ear and the over the little end of the ear. And over here also. And in this space under the hair. And under the ear, I'm going to put a little bit of dark color. Blend that in. This is the Payne's Gray. I could have made a, a dark violet with my red and blue, but I've decided um, to use the Payne's Gray. And this hair here is completely in shadow. And you can see a face starting to emerge. Again, I, I do have a strong shadow under here. And a little bit of a strong shadow right here. And in this crevice over here. And where the eyelid in the ball comes out, it's creating a shadow here in this space here. I could have made a, a violet, a, a bluish dark violet, just in the same way instead of the paint's gray. I'm going to go back to a little blue. I need a little more <clears throat> shadow here under the hair. The paper is um, buckling a little bit, so I'm going to just uh, try to get some of this color to move down because the paper is bu buckling. As it dries, the paper does that, unless you use extremely heavy 300 pound paper, it, it, any, it does do that. It's not a you know, it's just part of the process. I like a little more red in here, in the shadow here. I'm going to put a little more red in here, in the shadow here. Mm -hmm. 
drop some blue in to, get, to intensify the shadow. I want it a little darker. And then transition it into the, um, and for this I'm using my number two brush just because it's, it's tiny and allows me a little more control there. Um, I'm going to mix a little blue and red and define that lip. And I'm going to put some little lines in here, which are pretty standard. Um, not everybody. Everybody's got a different lip. But um, I'm going to put a little bit of line in there. A little more on this side than that side. And a little more blue in here and intensity on this side, down the shadow side. And then I've got this, I've mixed together, like I said, a little bit of the blue and the, the, the rose matter um, for some dark colors. Um, so I'm going to use that instead of the Payne's Gray. So I have to be careful not to put my hand on top of the color. Yeah, I'm going to take that. I'm going to define the eyebrow, which I haven't done so far, with that mixture of um, blue and red. So it's a violet, but it makes a nice dark. Put a little more in this crevice area and make the other eyebrow. Again, I have to be careful not to go on top of the painted area then smudge it. I have a little gadget that I can use to keep myself from doing that. Where did I put it? Over there. Okay. Okay. Now the <clears throat> The eye is um, a round ball inside the socket, so I'm just going to indicate there's, there's some color here, some shadow under the eyelid, and right away you see that looks a little more normal. Uh, this is probably a good place to stop for a while and let it dry and see how it comes out. Puppies uh, have decided it's a good place to let it dry for a while too, and I'll, I'll continue a little later after it's fully dry. Okay, I think while that is drying, I'd like it to be really very dry. Um, before I put on any glazing of the skin tone. So what I want to do is create some background. So I'm 
putting some water here, and I'm going to drop in some um, cerulean blue. And some, also some manganese blue. Um, they both granulate, which is nice. Um, I want to have a sense of a, a sky here. Very light wash, and I don't. So I'm using my paper towel to make some soft edges of um, clouds. I'm dropping in some ultramarine blue here, which is a little darker blue on the edges. It's the beginning of some clouds and sky. I like the idea of a blue sky because she has fairly bright, <coughs> well-lit areas <coughs> on her face that indicate that she might be in the sun. So, and I want to keep that. You can see the granulation happening. Um, these manganese blue uh, granulates a lot, and so does uh, ultramarine blue. making some soft edges. So it's as if we're looking at her and she's in front of the sky and um, I mean, maybe we're standing on uh, some wonderful mountain and there's just the sky behind. So I'm not um, I 
And then as we move down toward the uh, horizon, I think there's a little more darker tone. So I'm bringing in some of that rose matter and uh, into that mix. <coughs> could have made a background that was just a plain um, background of gray or something to frame the face, but as I was looking at this image, I was always thinking that she would be in front of a beautiful sky. I'm not saying that this is necessarily a really beautiful sky, but it's the indication of, of, of a blue sky with some clouds. and. Um, I'm going to let some this uh, lost edges of her shoulder kind of lay out here with a little bit of the, the same violet over here. And down in this edge here, and I don't want a big empty edge over here. So I'll take some of that same violet and build it around. I'm not going to put any specific clothes on her. We don't know if she's dressed or undressed. to give the paper a little texture and diversity. There's just a slight amount of color. We don't need to put very much in there to indicate that sky. question is, is it dry enough yet? I think not quite. So we'll let it dry a little bit and then come in with the idea um, of glazing. I need a little bit more shadow on this jaw here. Um, but not too much. And a little more shadow <coughs> where the hair above is putting some of this neckline into shadow, but not too much. And letting it blend in with this over here. made a violet of just the cobalt blue in the uh, in the rose matter. You can see it here. I'm bringing the rose matter in with the cobalt blue. And then with a not with not too wet brush, I'm gonna go in and 
put some direct violet in a few shadow areas. I know we, we let them blend and make a violet underneath and that's fine, but now I just want to put a little more intensity into a few shadow areas. before I do a skin wash. I'm going to get my little gadget <clears throat> so that I can lay my hand on it without, um, without dragging paint across the, the paper. A little bit of violet in this area here. bit under the eye here and uh, more intense shadow here on the side of the nostril and a little more in here. I have to lift some color here with water because the ear lobe is not matching the one on the other side. That becomes very distracting later when you realize that your ear lobes are not, <laughs> that are not the same size and they're not placed the same way. So I have to let that dry and go in and fix that later. And also, I need this ear to be dropping down a little bit. <clears throat> it helps to have a little better drawing. Um, but I have a tendency to minimize my, my drawing steps on watercolor because I don't want to see um, erasure marks and and I don't want to damage the paper at all by working it too much. And um, so what, what some watercolorists do, um, I'm a little too lazy to do that, but they do an extremely detailed drawing. And then they just trace the outlines using the graphite paper. Um, that way they minimize what is, uh, happen, you know, minimize any damage to the paper. I think that's pretty close now to what it should be. And I'll put a little bit of, this little gadget lets me rest my hand, put a little bit of dark blue and Rose matter. 
kind of intensely in this area because it is in shadow from the hair above sticking out further. This is just a piece of clear plastic that's shaped special just for this purpose to allow people to either draw or paint and rest their hands um, so that they're not rubbing their hand across the paper and smudging things. bit of shadow under the eyelid here. A more here. I've got a little bit of a, we've got to take out a little bit of color here. Lift it a little too, and I've got to move that pupil over a little bit. It's uh, not quite centered. You know, we don't want a pupil going in one direction different from the... Mm -hmm. the and this is where I took... Um, some Payne's Gray. You can also use black for that pupil. I'll just fix that pupil. Okay. This needs to be a little more in shadow. Here needs to be blended in a little bit more to soften the edges. Move this to the side for now. Gadget. I only discovered that this year and I was like, wow. I am so tired of smudging my paintings. That looks like a godsend, and it is a great little gadget. I forget what it's called, but you can just type in, you know, hand rest uh, for painting, and probably it'll show right up. to soften this edge here. It's too, it's too much of a line. Just a little water on the brush and that will soften that. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> with clouds, um, I'll take a little bit of that rose matter and blue. So it's a violet. And I'm just going to put a little bit of definition under some of these, at the bottom of some of these clouds. 
you know how it is when you look at the clouds. The sun is, when the sun is above, there's a, a bit of shadow under the cloud. And you just blend into the white. If I need to, I can come in and soften it that way with my paper towel. I've always got a paper towel in my hand, in, in my, my non-dominant hand. For me, it's my left hand. And a little bit of that sometimes on this on the side away from the sun. I think I've ruined that. I think that that's not an unreasonable thing to do with the cloud. I like to do a little bit of painting around my clouds. So the side away from the sun should have some shadow. Well, the other side is left without any shadows. And then underneath the sun, it's shining down on the cloud, then it's a little bit in shadow. What do you think? Is that starting to look a little more like a cloud? So what I did was I dropped in some blues and um, that were nice and bright. The cerulean and the manganese are both very bright and a little bit greenish like the sky is when it's a sunny day. What two wonderful colors for a sky. Uh, cobalt is often used too, but it's a little more, um, it's a little less bright. So um, for a really bright sunny day, I like the uh, manganese blue or the cerulean blue better. Moving away from the sun, I put a little bit of of ultramarine in there. So I'm going to do a little bit less definition here, but John carry some of that color it closer to the face. Um, just because it helps to define the face a little better. Just very lightly indicate. And less and less detail down here, but just a slight amount of transition here. Not for any specific reason, but I think that um, in this case, I'd like this just a little bit darker toward the horizon than the uh, bright blue that's often at the very top of the sky. So, so I'm bringing a little violet down there. Okay, this needs just a tiny bit of softening here. So we'll do a further glazing of skin tone. Um, when I come back.
Okay, the, um, the next stage in this um, process is to mix some reds and yellows and blues to make a skin tone. So I'm mixing the same rose matter and the same Rillian yellow. <clears throat> I'm thinking about, I think I'm going to bring in some Quinton Doan coral. And I think I'll bring in a little bit of New Gamboge, which is a yellow. It's a kind of a more uh, golden yellow, not so lemony. I kind of like that, that tone here. And then I'll bring in, um, I think I will stick with the Cobalt Blue. <clears throat> Bring in just a tiny bit. That was too much. So I'm bringing some more clinacridone coral and a little more Aurelian yellow. Maybe a little bit of opera pink, pinking that up a little bit. <clears throat> I have here a test, it's a little too brown, still not getting the color I want, a little more um, of the rose matter. I think a little bit more opera pink, which is a very bright pink. A little more. <clears throat> Still not getting the color I want. I think that's a little more in line with the color I'm wanting. The other one was a little too brown. Maybe a tiny bit more of the new gamboge. I could bring in some ochre. Um, I'm not sure I want to, but let me try. A little bit of yellow ochre. It has more opacity than I want to have, uh, generally. Especially for skin, skin color. Well, that's pretty skin looking right there. <clears throat> so now that I have my color mixed, I'm going to take my flat brush. And I want to work kind of quick because I don't want it to create any bleeding of the darks. I don't want it to be too wet. I just want to glaze over the underlying colors to bring them all together. So I'm doing that with a relatively dry brush, not too wet at all. Just dipping my brush 
a little bit <clears throat> in the color. And going over pretty much everything with my flat, almost in a dry brush, a very little moisture on the brush because I don't want to create bleeding of those darks into the lights. But I just want to create a <clears throat> glow of skin color and keep those I am drawing it with my paper towel in between. Being very, very careful about not having much water on there. Do the ears. for a little while because I'm almost finished with this painting. I want to take some transparent red and bring in some burnt sienna. Maybe a little bit of um, Van Dyke Brown. I'm just going to glaze over this hair color with a slight brown. Even a few highlights, not very much. So that's just a uh, those three colors were mixed to create a little bit of a sense of brown hair. the same color, just adding another little bit of layer to get a little more intensity in the shadow. And I think more glow to the, the shadow here. A little bit of a brownish cast on the shadow. I think this is, um, for the moment, done. I hope you enjoyed this process of glazing. Um, it may be that um, I would do a little bit more shadow here. That's a little bit, bring in a little bit more shadow under there.
And all I'm doing is taking that skin color that I made and putting it on in another layer and that automatically makes a little darker, that layer a little darker, a little more concentrated than what I had on the flat brush. get a little more. It's the same color that I used to glaze over the whole face and now I'm just putting a little bit more on to um, bring in a little more intensity in some places but it's the same same color that I mixed with uh, quinacridone coral and um, <coughs> New the Ambosian, Aurelian Yellow, Opera Rose, and Rose Matter, until I finally got a color that felt good to me. Again, that same color, just a little more intense over some shadows. I'm not crazy about the ears on this person, but I think um, it, in order to fix them, um, I would create more of a mess rubbing out than I would just leaving them there, okay. They're good enough for now, but they're not ideal. The ears are not perfect. Scrumble in a little more texture here. And the sky. It's a sky essentially, but it doesn't really matter if it is or it isn't. It's just background. Okay, I'm happy enough with this for now. I hope you enjoyed the process. I'll just hold it up. Um, 